to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Indeed. <laughs> you know, every year you think, hey, maybe I'll just ease into fantasy football. And every year it's like someone grabs you and chucks you out of a plane. You know what I mean? Oh, like it's yeah. just, it hits you right square in the face, like full steam ahead. Yeah. yeah I'm, Injuries. I'm taking on heartbreak. Look, I'm in the finals, I'm in the tournament. Across from me is is Daniel's son. He's got a bum leg. Yeah. He's standing on one leg. This is the easiest thing in my life. And then get crane kicked in the face. Because no, night... no one does that. Wait, so I'm Daniel's son in this story, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah, heck yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had um, what I thought was a boring, boring, boring first half of football last night. Maybe, the big story. The first three quarters. The big story here in the studio was that Mike Wright and Jason Moore were facing off against one another in the league of record. And Jason needed a mere four points from Dallas Goddard. In fact, after the Sunday games, he needed six total points from Tank Dell and Dallas Goddard. Yeah, it was a done deal. To get an easy win over Mike. We get to last night's game, and, you know, it's week two of the fantasy season. So I'm thinking to myself, Jason will be okay either way. It's week two. Like, he's not <laughs> – he's definitely not having a complete – an utter mental breakdown to the jeopardy of his family and friends in the middle of the fourth quarter of the Monday night football game in week two. That wouldn't be happening. Oh, man. Oh, man, I feel bad for my wife. Uh, yeah, no, I was I, I was tilted off the planet. So so we get to the point of this game where, where Dallas Goddard is not going to get the job done. In fact, he caught a 16-yard pass, Mike. Now, this yeah. is great because I get to recite this to Mike. Yeah. Mike was at a concert last night with some friends, so he knew – he, he knew he wasn't going to win because you don't win in that situation. Because Dallas Goddard, with A.J. Brown out of the game against the Falcons, needed four points. So essentially, what, three catches for 25 yards or so? Like, absolute nothingness. No, A.J. Brown should be an easy win. Jason is losing his mind five minutes left in the game. He's down by two points. Dallas Goddard catches a 16-yard pass. We think it's the last pass of the game. This brings Jason to within half a point. Oh, man. I just, Jason, at this point, I think probably – It was over. The neighbors called the police, all of the things you do for fantasy football. The Philadelphia Eagles go down the field. They soak up all of the Atlanta Falcons' timeouts. They're up by three points. The Eagles bring it down inside the 20. The Eagles proceed to decline a penalty that would have given them a first down in order to – Tush push their way to a first down. They accomplish the goal. Nick Sirianni's shooting the fingers in the air. He's being Nick Sirianni in the sideline. I'm smarter than you, Nick Sirianni. Yes, I am. Yeah, at this point, Dallas Goddard, <clears throat> he can't score again because all they're doing is running out the clock. And um, so this game looks all but over. Atlanta, there's there's a minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Atlanta has no timeouts. Yeah, I'm seeing the win. Philadelphia. The win probability chart. Uh, apparently, the Eagles were at a 97.6%. Game was over. The game was over. It's third down and three, okay? Third down and three, and Nick Sirianni pulls out another special magic card from his How pocket. How much time was on the clock? At minute and 30. Okay. So, your options here are I can run the football on third down. 40 seconds is going to be gone. Now, keep in mind, they've been running they've very been running successfully. For a chunk, plus they have the touch push, so it's like they have an extra down. Is, is that because they gave a superstar running back a Big, huge contract yes, to, to yes. pair with that offensive line yes. for for situations like this. Yeah, the yeah. one the, the, All right. the okay. same offensive line that made DeAndre All Swift right. look like he's not a guy off the street last yep. year. The, so I'm caught up. So you're caught up. And and it's just let's run the ball with run it with Saquon. Forty more seconds goes off. If you want to run it on fourth down, which I'm sure Nick Sirianna would have done, boom. There you go. You lose more time off the clock. Atlanta would have to go down the length of the field with maybe thirty seconds left, maybe less. No timeouts. But no, we've got our magic deck of cards, Mike, 
and we're going to throw a, a, a <laughs> trick screen pass to Saquon Barkley. The play call, it's perfect. Saquon out of the backfield, nobody's covering him. He's going to waltz into the end zone, or he's going to just probably slide down and don't knee it out. Drops the football. So that superstar running back I was just talking yeah. about, he uh, yep. dropped an easy catch. Huh? Dropped an yeah. easy catch. Now, But huh. listen, Mike. Thank you, uh, thank you, take one. You're going to be fine because there's no way that the <laughs> Eagles, like this this point differential, six points. So you'd have to like score a touchdown kick, miss the extra point, go to overtime for Goddard to even get a chance. The Eagles proceed to play against what seems to be nobody for 85 yards. There's no. It's like there's nobody on the field. Philadelphia, it's like they put their helmets on backwards. <laughs> That's what the DBs played like. Not only does Atlanta march down the field and score after they looked like they couldn't do anything on offense, they do it with 35 seconds left on the clock, which means Philadelphia gets the ball back. The table is now set for Jason Moore to – One more chance to throw. <laughs> to, to maybe win this game. He just needs one catch from Goddard. Play number one, directly to Goddard. Game, set, match. Jason Ooh defeats Mike. Mm -hmm. Play number two. My, my voice being uh, hard right now? Yeah. That's from that game. Yeah, that's what your voice is. And um, next pass, interception down the sideline. Game's over. So one pass on the final drive to defeat Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, th that's what happened, Mike. I will tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. It is in the best interest of everyone. I was at the Midnight Show. That, that's the band. One of my favorite bands of all time. Living my life to the fullest. Had I watched that, <laughs> had I actually sat down and like got been to, a part of that story, got to like the the last catch where he was just short and be like, "That's it. That like, that's it." I would not be here. I mean, Jason. I would not be here. Jason posted in our company. Uh, communications channel, two man show tomorrow because he had lost this game. He and then Jason texted me. No, he did not. He sent me a text. What did that text say? I, I was tilting. Was it, uh, re it says, readable for air? Let me let me peruse it real quick. Uh, sorry for the hard loss. My wife says I should text you and be a gracious winner. I am a loser, and I was a millisecond from being a loser. Good slash bad game. Sorry. I hope it somehow helps your roster. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That means your wife experienced so much <laughs> fantasy football madness last night. I was your a text, wife. A text, guys. This was not through the works. Like this was a this was a a man to man one v one text. A personal. What text. I did what I did to you was unfair. <laughs> at, at one point, Jason's wife texted me asking why he's saying uh, that she should change the combination to the gun safe. <laughs> oh my! Fantasy, fantasy football is fun. Guys. Welcome into the fantasy footballers, right. Andy, Mike, and Jason. We got a waiver show today. I am. We really I'm thrilled. I didn't watch it. We really you do wouldn't have survived. Care about fantasy football? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I I love that this story is teasing out secret parts of texts and man. Great news though. Uh, start sit decision that. My team took two kickoff on Sunday. Did, in fact, cost me the game. <laughs> oh, no. Was that your quarterback? No, it was Wandale. Uh, it was Wandale or Michael Pittman. Oh, nobody man. in One their of those right, guys got a touchdown. Nobody in their right mind would have gone Wandale Robinson. Uh, it was very, very close. For all the And all the reasons I thought I'm not going to play Pittman, they happened. So you just didn't have the courage. Correct. Okay. The name, Woo! it was the name. It was How? it was the name versus the player who I thought was in a better script yep. and would have better production. Yeah, well, because one, here, here's the thing. If you lose with Wandale and you would have won with Pittman, you can't live with yourself. If you lose with Pittman and you would have won with Wandale, can you live with yourself? Only because I didn't watch the game. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, how we doing in Deucer's Alley over there? Um, Al Borland, uh, he was along for the ride last night. Doing great. Yeah. Yeah, did you We're get living our best life back here. You get a W in League of Record? I did. Okay, congratulations. You and Jason both. Um, we have a waiver wire episode today. Very excited to get into these names. A lot of decisions to be made because there's been a lot of injuries. I counted my leagues this morning. And I have uh, five leagues where I was very Cooper Cup dependent. That was a big bet. Mm -hmm. I, I believed in Cooper Cup. Put my money where my mouth was. I mean, you were right. And I'm broke. 
Yeah, you were you were right. He Twenty-one targets hurt. to yeah. Now he's hurt on the IR, so there are some pickups that you're going to need to make. A reminder: if you use the Ultimate Dashboard, our new in-season tool, it will customize your waiver rankings for you based on your league. This is a brand new feature, so I love it so much. All of our waiver wire rankings, you can see them on the FantasyFootballers.com for free. If you go to JoinTheFoot.com and join as a Foot Clan supporter and get access to the ultimate dashboard. We'll customize your waiver rankings. We'll give you custom spot starts. We will give you an optimization of your lineup every week, which is, um, you know, a simple way to see who we have projected for the highest points scored. And that's at jointhefoot.com. I think we've recapped Monday night, but I'll get into the players real quick. Big game for Jalen Hurts on the ground, 85 rushing yards and a touchdown. The tush push worked uh, well last night. Bijan and Saquon were incredible. Neither of them had a rushing touchdown, so their their games were efficiency on the ground but didn't score. Darnell Mooney, you know, once again had a, a nice game. But I that had, was all the end, right? It was it was no, not all the no. end. Well, he, I mean, he had the big he, I thought he had uh the big touchdown. Correct. But, but then on that final drive, wasn't he the other two of those yes. two of his three receptions were that final drive yes. that's what i mean yes yes he did have the touchdown earlier and then those two catches all of drake london's fantasy value came in the final drive as well um including the touchdown and so you know to me drake london this is a sell high for me on drake london you could also make the opposite argument and say kirk cousins figured things out looked a lot he, better in he, game two and maybe drake london will be fine he did look a little bit better we saw play action and actually All right, ha hey. had him, you know, move around in the pocket a little bit. So having, you know, one week in the books from, you know, playing on that, you know, back from the Achilles injury, I do expect Kirk Cousins will continue to get better each week as we go along with the season. Kyle Pitts had two of his catches on the final drive, I believe, three for 20. That final drive was very important for fantasy football, <laughs> for Goddard, for, uh, for Jason Moore, London, for Jason. Yeah, most of this game was a fart fest. It got really exciting, though. Yeah, it did. Uh, you also had Devontae Smith, 7 for 76 and a touchdown. And um, there you go. It was it was a fun game, and the end of it was unbelievable, and now the Eagles are 1-1. One -on -one. And the problem with the Eagles, maybe it's not a problem for fantasy. This, is, this defense on the back end is a real issue. Yeah, so, yeah it really is. You know, that's that's going to be the storyline as we go forward. Is there going to be a good matchup for um, for opposing defense? A Philly, edge, a Philly edge rusher has not recorded a sack in six games going back to last year. Can they just edit, undo the Reddick trade and pay him? Because <laughs> yeah. that would help, right? They Someone sure needs to need pay him. him. Yeah, yeah. So anything else you guys want to talk about from the game or can we jump into the news? Let's go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We found out right before the game, during an interview, that A.J. Brown says he is expecting to miss a couple of weeks. Does he include last night's game in his description of a couple of That's weeks? That's a great question. I would assume so. But that means that this is not over. It's not done. We got news this morning that Joe Mixon's injury is not considered long-term or serious. Damian Pierce could be back. Cam Akers and Damian Pierce would be the tandem in the backfield for Houston in the game that Mixon misses if he misses a game, which we don't know yet. Yeah, so we don't know if Mixon is going to be back. And then if he misses, yeah, we don't know chart. if Damian Pierce is going to be back. So it Cam Akers could be a great pickup. Yeah. Or he could be a backup to the backup. Yeah. So there you go. Bryce Young is being benched. <sighs> Let that sit there. Oh. Incredible. Oh, man. I mean. Go ahead. Hit the busted. That's what that oh. fits here. Busted. Yeah. He is. Things, he is. He's broken. I posted. Right <clears throat> I posted a video after week one of all of his worst plays, and it was a very long video. And so many people responded to that, talking about how it wasn't his fault because the offensive line was terrible. It, it, and, and to their credit, in that video I posted from week one, the offensive line, he was under, he was under pressure a ton. He was 
<clears throat> he was under so little pressure this last week. The offensive line held up great. They were graded awesome by Pro Football Focus. This was solely 100% on Bryce Young. And Canal said, look, my job's to win games. And I've got the, I do not have my best quarterback on the field right now. The best quarterback on the roster is Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle, and they're putting him in. I approve the move. I think yeah. that it is the right call for the team, the franchise, the players, the future. You can make the argument, oh, you play Bryce Young and you can just salt away the year and just lose and get the first pick. Is that going to work? Does the first pick always work, Zach Wilson, Bryce Young? I mean, you can mess up the pick, and then you've got to acclimate. I think you have to win ball games for your fan base, and it gives you the best chance to do that. They are not. This bad of a team. It's a quarterback issue. Andy Dalton can rebirth the offense. He can bring Deontay Johnson to a place of fantasy relevance, along with Adam Thielen or Xavier Leggett. And and this is so good for fantasy football. This is incredible for fantasy football. Not only is it good for you know the hope of Deontay Johnson or uh, the hope of Xavier Leggett or um. It's it's also what about me, Jason? <laughs> and you, Thielen. Thank you. Um, it's so good for opposing offenses to me. We we talked about last week. Like I, you know, I said I'm benching Lad McConkey everywhere I have him because you're not going to need to throw the ball much against the Panthers. That's usually what what happens. But if the Panthers' offense can actually score points now, because their defense isn't good, you, you know, like the Raiders this week. I mean, that's so exciting for, for Bowers and, and Devontae Adams to be right. able to be like, oh, here's now an easy defense with an offense that might be able to keep up and you can't just run the, the ball out. So it's, big, big move. It's huge. I mean, we we tend to get really zoomed in on, well, the quarterback, you got to let him play through the thing. But there's a ton of other players on that team. There's a ton of coaches that will be – should you ride this out, now they have that scarlet letter on their chest. of No, you were part of this team that you couldn't get anything done. And for a lot of guys, you get one opportunity to be a coach of, of any kind, and that that's it. If you fail that bad, you have to go. And I believe for Bryce Young, it's a, it's a devastating blow to be benched. But Bryce Young was not going to figure this out on the field. If there is mm -hmm. any way to save the pick of Bryce Young and let him be and turn him into a franchise quarterback, this, to me, is the only way it's possible. I don't know if it is, but this, to me, is the only path that it could actually happen. I agree. He needs to sit down, take some time. But I, I don't think it's going to – I think this is a Zach Wilson situation where you're be. just saying it, – it didn't work. He's not. He's not good enough um, on the NFL field. He'll get more opportunities in the future for this team or another team just because of his history. But I don't think it's going to work. And Andy Dalton last year in his one start, <clears throat> three hundred and sixty-one yards and two touchdowns. He, he threw the ball fifty-eight times. Bryce Young is not throwing the ball fifty-eight times. Debo Samuel surprise injury. Going to miss a few weeks with a calf strain. So Kittle who already had a good game last week, going to be involved. Juwan Jennings, who will come up on the waiver show yeah. today. And Brandon Ayuk's return to glory? Mm -hmm. It better I be. Think so. You don't. You didn't give him that shmoney for nothing. John McVay confirms that Cooper Cup will miss an extended period of time and is a candidate for injured reserve. An ankle injury for Cooper Cup. They're running out, man. Oh my they god. They also had their guard their guards gone. They now. lost another offensive lineman. I I feel like they deserve to be allowed to like wave the white flag. Like they should be able to just be like, nah, dude, I, can't, <laughs> I, 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 we need two more bye weeks. We're taking losses. They should be able to just say, we we lose the next two games. We're not playing football. We don't want to lose more players right. in that time. I mean, be, because you will, you, you, you might lose Matthew Stafford with no offensive line and no receiving weapons, but we'll talk about their wideouts on the waivers today as well. Um, We've got more news to talk about. I want to take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk about a big, big injury yeah. that's going to have big, big implications. Perhaps one of the reasons why Jason reacted so extremely last night was that he was right off the heels of 
losing Isaiah Pacheco, who is expected to miss six to eight weeks, a fractured fibula. The Chiefs are expected to bring in Kareem Hunt for a visit. Carson Steele is there. Samaj P. Ryan. Clyde is still on IR. For at least two more two weeks. Two more weeks. So the backfield in Kansas City is another big talking point on today's show. Yeah, when we get to the waivers, I we will talk about Carson Steele and Samaj P. Ryan in both situations because we hopefully should know later tonight after we're recording this but before waivers run whether it looks like the Chiefs are going to sign Kareem Hunt. So we, you know, we'll we'll talk about it. it, it, it you know, what do you do if they do, and what do you do if they don't? Which, yeah, after obviously we can only share the news that we have. TheFantasyFootballers dot com. We have free waiver rankings up there. Uh, should you want to go check those out, and if you want to support the show, uh, Andy, I think you mentioned the ultimate dashboard at the top of the show. That is a customized to your league look at the waivers based on our waiver rankings. Yep, exactly. So um, big week, lots of decisions to make on your team and how much fab you're going to drop or waiver priority. Jack Ferguson is uh, – Jack Ferguson? Why does it say Jack Ferguson? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Ferguson. You run burgundy that one. I well, really to, did. <laughs> to be fair, it says Jack Ferguson in the doc. Colby Jack Ferguson. <laughs> Oh no one is frantically trying to change it either. Jake Ferguson, yeah, Jake of the Ferguson Dallas Cowboys is uh, expected to be back. His brother Jack will not be playing <laughs> in the game, but Jake Ferguson, um, I'm blaming Kyle. I think that's fair, right? Is oh, that Kyle? Sure. Is that Betts? Who's falling on the sword today? Is this Brooks, we need I'll fall on the sword. That's All right, fine. was it you, Kyle? Okay, right. this no. is when he's like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> Kyle. Don't be a good guy. <laughs> All right, well, Jake Ferguson expected back. That's good news for the Cowboys. It's good news for their offense, although they sure they made use of the Schoon Man. Schoon Man. Evan Ingram, week to week with the hamstring injury. That sucks, man. That sucks, but... Did you see the numbers that Cole Strange put up? Um, do tell us. Uh, while you look Do you know up, who Cole Strange yeah, is? No, I know who Cole no, Strange is. No, I know. Um, Brenton uh, Strange. <laughs> Wait, I yeah. Uh, uh, it's Brenton. I said nothing because I did not know who Cole Strange Brenton was. Brenton Strange <laughs> stepped in and put up uh, three receptions for 65 yards on six targets. There was a Cole Strange, right? Yeah, apparently a, a Patriots O lineman. Thank you. Okay. Okay, yeah. that makes I feel slightly a lot better. of sense. Um, oh my gosh, I acted like you didn't. Doug, <laughs> Doug Peterson though did say Tank Bigsby should be good to go, which is great news. Nothing serious with the shoulder injury that might have been a head injury that's good uh Taysom Hill also checked out just fine uh I think he'll be back but that that tight end room we're starting to see is like Foster Moreau's the starter and then Juwan Johnson's also part of it and then Taysom Hill's also part of it so like when you know with this news of Taysom Hill's injury I was thinking if he misses time Juwan Johnson looks interesting but Foster's been the starter and and Right now, the way this offense is like playing, like they're not throwing the ball close to the line of scrimmage. Right now, Derek Carr has the like he's going downfield more than anybody in football. Well, oh, and and part of the issue is we, I we still don't know what is the actual like what is a neutral offense for the New Orleans Saints. They're they've blown two teams out. Yep, they won't blow a team out every single. I and mean, I guess week. they're they're neutral at the beginning. Uh, yeah, but then they hit a big play right away. It, it it seems like to Rashid Shahid. So I don't think we know what what this team in a regular game actually looks like. What's but it, the latest, it could be Foster. Mike, on your boy T Higgins. Oh, guys, great news! Head coach Zach Taylor says things are moving in a quote positive direction <laughs> for Week Three. So very actionable. Yeah, it's it's a positive direction. Even more excellent news. They play on Monday night. Oh, perfect! So, you uh, who knows? So we we won't <laughs> don't know. play T Higgins. Yeah, don't we, play T Higgins even if he's active. What if the, it's three full practices? Because you won't know until then. Oh, three full it, practices. Yeah, if he's practicing in full the whole. Uh, week. What's the flow chart here? Like limited, okay, limited, right, full. We play. Oh man. Um. We did. Do we need at least two one fulls? Full? Two fulls. I two think fulls. that's right. Okay. I think you got to have two full practices. Uh, and I don't think you're going to have that this week. And the the saddest part is that it's against the Commanders. This is a wonderful matchup. Away, I mean, T yeah, Higgins two will falls. 
I think T. Higgins is going to score a lot of points on a lot of people's bench. Yeah, I mean the it idea that like you, you should play him. the idea that you can't wait for. Well, him. no, if you play him, he won't score a lot uh, of points. This is T. On. Higgins. <laughs> You know, you it'd be easy to say start somebody else and don't wait on him, but the matchup's so good, and there's so many wide receiver injuries right now that you're gonna like Juwan Jennings. Are you playing Juwan? Are you waiting for T? If you could have Yoshi Voss or Trent Irwin waiting in the wings behind T, yeah, if you that it, would be the strategy. A hundred percent. If if I've got T Higgins, I'm picking. You know, if if Yoshi Voss is out there, absolutely, I'm gonna pick him up, and he will be my pivot in a great matchup. Um, should T not play, and then I can play T if he's in. Yeah, yeah. Or if you had uh, Zach Moss, who seems like a good play, or you had Chase sure. Brown. I, I would as play. A pivot I would play Zach Moss over T if T is active, though. Yeah. So what about Chase Brown? Um, you, you, yeah. I mean, you could use him as a as a pivot, but I would go T over Brown. Uh, Tomlin's preparing for Justin Fields to start again. Yeah, we'll see. They they said if they go two and zero, it's probably going to be Fields and. For the foreseeable future. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Let's talk about the running back position. Let's start with the injury impacted options. So we're talking P Ryan and Carson Steele with the potential addition of Kareem Hunt. And then we'll talk about Cam Akers and Damian Pierce. What approach are you taking, Jason? I know you went – I was I was looking over at you. This is before you melted down into a puddle later in the evening. I was watching you watch every Carson Steele snap and opportunity, looking over his collegiate profile, watching Samaj P. Ryan, who profiles uh, more prototypically as a running back. I mean, Carson Steele still is flagged as a fullback. What was your takeaways from your review? Yeah, the way that they've used him so far on the season, he is primarily, him being Carson Steele, he is primarily a special teams player. Uh, it was like almost every snap that I'm watching was just a, a kickoff or a punt. And so they gave him some short yardage stuff. I think he's a quality short yardage back in that fullback role. In college, he did have a lot of production as a running back. But that was when he was playing in the MAC. He wasn't, you know, wasn't great competition. His final year, he goes to UCLA. He, he was okay, over five a carry, but was not like a, uh, you know, a workhorse type of running back. It's my belief, and this is what I'm going to do on my waivers. I think most people are going to run after Carson Steele. He's going to be the number one fab dump player this week for people needing a running back. I prefer Pirine. I really do. I think this offense that wants to dump the ball down and Patrick Mahomes is not throwing it far, the veteran presence, he is such a good veteran pass-catching option. He's frustrating for fantasy managers because Pirine's never been special. He's never done a ton that, that you just have a great fantasy stat line. But for NFL teams, he's been really solid. He knows where to go. He, he knows how to get his head around quick. He knows how to pick up in protections. He has a route tree for a running back. I think P. Ryan is the play here, and I, I expect him to get four receptions a game going forward. Now, this is all without Kareem Hunt there. This is – both of those, I'm P. Ryan ahead of Steele. That is under the imagination that Kareem Hunt is not signed. If Kareem Hunt is signed, I like Kareem Hunt better than both of them, although I would, I would doubt he starts this week. So if you need a start immediately, um, then it would still be P. Ryan. P. Ryan, looking over what he's capable of doing, reminded me a little bit of how we we were never big Damian Williams fans of the talent. Right. But in this offense, just being where you need to be is a pretty valuable trait. Yeah, I mean, that role will have over the next, you know, it, it, I think Pacheco, you know, it said six to eight weeks. So look at it as two months. You're going you're gonna to miss him for two months. Over that time, there will be probably – three or four receiving touchdowns to the receiving back on this team. And touchdowns are just about everything in fantasy. Mike, do you have any disagreement with this strategy there? I I lean more on the side of Carson Steele, but it's a like I think that the the real high value touches are going to be split of I would expect P Ryan will be the third down guy or and worked in and a little bit on first and second down. He'll he should catch more passes. But when they get to the goal line 
that should be Carson Steele. Yes. You prefer to have the running back who has both of those things. That's how you actually get fantasy production. So it, it's it's more a question of what do you believe the Kansas City Chiefs do? Because they have they've been extremely run heavy. Like the let me pull up Mahomes actual this is why I love Pacheco. <laughs> Mahomes in the first two two games has thrown the ball twenty eight times and twenty five times. Like that is that's not elite volume. Mm. That that doesn't make sense for Patrick Mahomes. It makes sense for like the last year or so of that that's what the team has become. But that team at Isaiah Pacheco, do they morph back to the we're gonna try to be the high flyers and then Samaje P. Ryan's on the field all the time? It's a it's a very tough situation to gauge. I feel like you do you gotta make a call. Like yes. you, you should be going after these guys. I just don't know what level of of fab to put on them. Do you burn a priority like Samaj P. Ryan is on a few more rosters than than Carson Steele, or let uh, whatever. Let's say they're both there. Jay, you you have the number one waiver priority. Are you burning it for one of these guys? Yeah, I I you're, am. I, I'm, I'm taking a shot. I know for a fact that their running back is gone for two months. So I am. This is not a one week asset. This is a couple month asset. You burn your priority for it. And the truth is, Carson Steele is the much more explosive athlete and if you want a home run if one of these picks ends up being a just an absolute home run and the next two months we look back and we're like we should have dumped everything that could only be Carson Steele uh, P Ryan can't be a superstar however I really do believe P Ryan is going to be uh, an every week flex option and will score more fantasy points than Steele and it is worth mentioning I, again we don't know how the, the breakdown is going to go but Carson Steele has pass catching in his profile as a college player, his second year at Ball State, he got 29 passes at UCLA. And, you know the the volume went way down. Of course, it was only it was from 289 carries down to 167. Still a great yards per carry, and he caught 17 passes. Like catching 17 passes in college is at at the running back what slash fullback whatever position. That's not bad. If you're he has the ability. What I'm hearing though is that if Cream Hunt signs today. I mean, it, it's it's quite a bet for your fab, and maybe you'd – would you still want to dance with the Kansas City roulette, or would you want to turn your attention to Rico Dowdle, who got the start, and it seems like seems like the Cowboys are figured, figuring out the fact that, like, they need to move beyond, you know, Zeke because Deuce Vaughn got opportunities. Sure. Do you do you look at – you know, if you're in a one-week start, do you, do you save the fab and look to a – Cam Akers. I'm not as concerned. Or Ty Chandler. I'm not as concerned about Kareem Hunt as Jason is because I think he's I think he's toast. But they they need depth at the position. So uh, even if Kareem Hunt is added, I I I don't think that he's the starter. What having seen him play the last couple of years, it's it's been bad. It's been very inefficient. So moving to that question, Rico Dowdle is 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 so tough because. Over two weeks, he's not a playable guy. But from week one, where he was, he was the backup. It was a timeshare. The opportunities were very split, but like it was very close between him and Zeke. Then he gets the start. But now Deuce Vaughn has put himself into it. The great news for Rico Dowdle at this point is maybe the arrow keeps going up. Forty-three percent of the snaps, uh, five targets. For Rico Dowdle, you know the off season was, hey, Rico Dowdle looks like he's going to be the pass catching running back for the for the Dallas Cowboys. It looks like that part is true, and he could keep earning more and more play time. All right, so what are you doing with that roulette, Jason? If if Cream Hunt signs, are you still making the Kansas City investment um, over the other options? I, I I would probably pivot to other options if I'm talking about burning a priority. I'll. I'll on a fab system, I'm going to go after pretty much all of these guys. Like, um, you know, you brought up Ty Chandler. Ty Chandler is a really good option. Like, he he has looked very good. He's obviously the the second in the timeshare here. Uh, but I think you could start him in a pinch. Yes. Um, and even um, Deonta Foreman. I don't think we've brought his name up. He had 14 carries last week in a tough matchup against Jacksonville. He didn't do much with it. Gets the Giants next week. But yeah, the Giants this week, and he's widely available. And he won't cost you anything. I mean, it, he won't cost you much. Yeah, Ty Chandler, 10 carries. Deonta Foreman, 14 carries. Rico Dowdle had seven with the targets. Braylon Allen scored twice. I feel like that stat line 
He is the Quinton Johnston of the running back position this week. <laughs> yeah. Two scores. You know, having, you know, seven carries and four targets is not. It's not nothing. That's not nothing. So, you know, when you think about long term, obviously he's never going to threaten Brees Hall in this offense. But, you know, if you have Brees Hall, are, is this a high priority ad yes. compared to what he used to be? Yeah. Looking around what is happening, the devastation that is that is raining down on us with the injuries, I think at this point you should insure yourself. As in, if Brees misses time, Braylon Allen would be a full fab dump. He would be a, a full priority burn, and he would be he'd be very good for fantasy. He looks really good. You know, when you talk about how Trey Benson's looked so far as a rookie versus how Braylon Allen's looked, I mean, there's been a pretty marked – difference I could not believe what what the NFL said they thought of Braylon Allen in the draft was shocking to me okay, me too I, I, I mean he was like the kid is 20 years old right now and he is an absolute Mack truck yeah and who had tons of production it was it was his fall in the draft was strange youngest and, player and now, to ever score a touchdown and now he now the NFL looks stupid are you dropping Chase Brown, who's had only ten opportunities in two weeks, to pick up one of these guys? To pick up one of these guys, yes. If I yeah, if if I need production right now, the, uh, Chase Brown's still a fine stash, but yeah, you, you got to make moves if you need points. Blake Corum, you're saying goodbye to Blake Corum? You, you yeah, if I, I need so. points, I, I think so. I'm not even sure that it would be Blake Corum if Kyron went down. Now it seems like it might be Rivers. It's been running. And Rivers. how heavy do you want to be invested in that offense? Zamir White has done nothing. I'm not dropping Zamir White. Just, I'm not either. They, they've got Carolina this week. I I believe he has a really good week this week. And then one of the other drop candidates, which is a huge no way for me, but Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards is someone who might have been dropped in your league last week. Like he's he's mostly rostered, but he he was dropped in our league. Um, go look for him because twenty nine carries. Yeah, I mean, no, no he he should he should one hundred percent be rostered. Also, I don't think we really set our order here. What to do with the Houston backfield? We've got to, you know. What is your pecking order, your flow chart for the Joe Mixon situation? I am probably not prioritizing Houston running backs unless I have Joe Mixon. And if I have Joe Mixon, I'm probably just trying to pick up Cam Akers because he looked better than Damian Pierce in the preseason. And I don't think Pierce coming off a hamstring injury is going to get all the work. So I'll take the player that was on the field last week that looked better in preseason that – I think the team trusts versus taking the shot on Pierce, who when he has had opportunities in the last year, hasn't looked good. So I would go Cam Akers. I would go Cam Akers. I agree too. completely. I'm I'm Cam Akers. However, I would not go hard. I would I would make a zero dollar bid on him because I'm fine losing out on him. This appears to be a one week rental that might be a zero week rental. Yes. And that one yes. week is against Minnesota. And that Flores defense has looked awesome. I agree. Yeah, this is the this is the Jeff Wilson gamble of last week. If you want to see the right. the yes. entire order of our waiver rankings, including the addition of some higher rostered players that might be available in your league, like Zach Charbonnet, um, go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com and check that out. And well, Isaac Garendo is another guy to. You he, think he should he should just be stashed? He's the new next man up for the 49ers, Should Jordan Mason get injured? All right, at wide receiver, if he's not on a roster, please put Rashid Shahid on a roster. We have a number of 56% as a roster percentage. So uh, he's been integral to the Saints offense. But the big storyline is how much do you spend on Quentin Johnston because he's <laughs> kind of been the most available, um, most popular pickup at wide receiver. And is he that for you? And what would you actually invest? Yeah, I don't I, – I'm, I'm not going to invest a lot in any of these wide receivers this week. There are – there's like a dozen wide receivers that I think are all similar to each other where I'm going to save my fab money. I don't see Quentin Johnston as a great, you know, uh, break it like I have to have him. He's going to make a huge difference. Uh, he got the two touchdowns last week. Now, uh, Shahid, if he was out there, I would go sure. a little harder after him. But everyone else, I mean, there's we talked about Yoshivas. Uh, he could be great. Um, you still have the, you know, the Rams players lost cup. So, you can go back to the well of trying to go after Demarcus Robinson or Tyler Johnson. Those are the top two, right? And then two to Atwell would be behind. Whittington would be behind. I would go Whittington as the third. Whittington should be the Whittington should be the replacement for Cup. Like he should be the he'll play in the slot where 
Tyler Johnson took over the Puka role. I I think that's how it, it shakes out. Now, Tutu will get on the field, and Stafford – the, the Rams are still so strange with Tutu Atwell because whenever he's out there, he's targeted. Stafford throws in the ball, and then they don't give him playing time. But Stafford seems to find him easily and loves throwing him the ball. It, that's a very strange situation. But the the higher snaps, I believe, will go to Whittington. Outside of Shahid being available, I would Robinson would be my biggest add. Then probably so Robinson over Quinton. For me, okay. yeah, because I, I just think that it's anomalous. I, I am not confident in any Chargers wideout. I mentioned it yesterday. I could be proven wrong in the right matchup. But I don't know who it's going to be. I believe you're going to get a Palmer week. You're going to get a Disley week. You're going to get you know, uh, a rotation, and it's not going to be consistent because the passing volume is not going to be needed. If you run the ball 35 times a game, which I think their defense is good. I mean, what, what are they – They've given up 13 points on the year in two weeks. Like the the recipe for them is is going to be burning clock, running the football, and passing when you have to on third down. It feels like. And so for me, Quentin Johnson, if he doesn't score, he's a bust. McConkey, if he doesn't score for me, bust. Palmer, same thing. So for me, I Quentin is the player everybody's going to go spend their fab on that I'm probably not going to spend it on personally. Sure, he's ranked you know near the top. But that's not meaning that I'm going to go burn the waiver priority. It's if I can get him for cheap or for free and have a pivot option that works. Robinson should be valuable for a team that doesn't, you know, that's hurt on the defensive side. That gave up a ton of points. Should be throwing the football. The schedule is brutal for the yeah. Rams. Yeah, I mean, negative game scripts. Throw San, the football. San Francisco, Chicago, Green Bay are the next three. Yeah, I mean, that's just the way that I break it down. I do think that. Yoshi Voss should be paid attention to in Cincinnati. If Higgins misses another game, it could be good as as soon as Monday night for Yoshi Voss. Yeah, and and sometimes you just need a week. You just need to stream a flex type of wide receiver, and you say who's got a good matchup and opportunity. Juwan Jennings for the 49ers with Debo Samuel out. He should step right into I that role. It. I love he, it. He looks good out there this week. Um, he gets to play against the Rams, who are beat up. I uh, I would be fine picking him up and starting. Do you see who got his first catch of the year for the 49ers last uh, last week, though? After the you know, I believe it, uh, I believe Chris Conley. What? I believe Chris Conley <laughs> caught a pass. Missed that one. Am I? Am I? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he still plays football. Yeah, he's a 49er. All right. Are you paying any attention to Jalen Tolbert's nine targets, six for 82? It was interesting because Brandon Cooks only had two yeah, in so that game. Of the Dallas Cowboys, that's and, where Tolbert is. And Jalen Tolbert, you know, the game was weird. They were being humiliated. They were throwing the ball a ton unsuccessfully. Do you make – I mean, what do you – I, I still like Cooks over Tolbert. Yeah, I, I would still prioritize Cooks, but it's a it, – like Brandon Cooks was in that game. That they were getting humiliated, and and he only ended up with, uh, you know, two targets. Where Jalen Tolbert, it's it has Tolbert figured something out is is more of the question. And like in just stashing him, I, I think it's a do, stash. That if you don't need a wide receiver help right now, and you're going to let everybody else fight for the high profile players, like are you going to stash someone like? He came, Jalen I Tolbert mean, or or Mike Williams from the Jets? Oh, Mike Williams. Mike Williams, as he okay. gets healthier and healthier, he, you know, he didn't play much in week one. I think three weeks from now, Mike Williams will be a guy you can start in your flex every week. I don't, I don't, I don't expect Tolbert to get there. He could, but I have a higher, okay. you know, probabilities on Mike Williams personally. They pulled Dak in that game as well. Like that game was just toast. Um, another uh, Jawan Jennings type of player is Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds is a quality NFL wide receiver, yeah. not special for fantasy, but he's been really he's involved. On the Denver Broncos Yes, now. <laughs> uh, on, on the Denver Broncos. He gets a matchup against Tampa Bay. He had 93 yards last week. I think he's fine for a, a, a you know a spot start. Khalil Shakir, if he's out there, is in the massively rostered but should pick up, was 5 for 54 in this last week. Tyler Johnson is the secondary guy, I think, to pick up in – Los Angeles, way less rostered. Would you spend a priority on Tyler Johnson with the window of opportunity, or do you think it's just going to be 
I wouldn't too many targets. I wouldn't burn a priority on on Tyler Johnson with San Francisco and Chicago as the next two matchups. I will mention a player that has looked he looked better than any wide receiver on this team in the preseason. Got hurt, disrupted his start to the to the regular season. But Josh Downs will be oh. back soon in Indianapolis. And Josh Downs Yeah, it's he, um they could use a player like him in this offense. Right now everything's downfield, which has been literally hit and miss for Anthony Richardson. So Josh Downs, I think if they had a rapport in the preseason and he looked good, he would be a deep league stash. For sure. And and Darnell Mooney, we talked about him in the in the game breakdown, but he is the wide receiver too. If Kirk Cousins keeps getting better and healthier, being able to be more comfortable in the pocket, I think you know, that's that's a guy I would want on my roster for sure. And Jerry Judy, he's mostly rostered, but he actually looked you know, we got to give him a little bit of credit cuz it's been a long time since we've spoken positively about Jerry Judy, but he looked good last week. He I, made, made a couple of good catches. I was made to feel very bad every time I took him at the last pick of every draft. <laughs> so uh, five for 73, and uh, Amari Cooper's not on the same page with Deshaun Watson the way Judy has been. So um, what about what What do you believe about Alec Pierce right now who's playing a ton of snaps? Man, I just to circle back to Indianapolis, I know he's the wide receiver six on the year, but you're just, you know. It's fool's gold. I, I I have a hard time grabbing Alec Pierce, who has spent so much of his career running downfield and not coming down with those catches that, you know, to put him in my lineup and start him is just, if I've got Anthony Richardson and I'm a super underdog, okay, sure. I'll, I'm just going to try to, you know, go for the fire and hope he catches a bomb touchdown. But I... I have a really hard time buying into Alec Pierce. All right, let's play. Um, oh, and the Dorch is a good start this week against Detroit. They give up so many slot <laughs> points. I wouldn't do it. I would. He Coward. just—he was just like he was just useless last week. Oh yeah, I mean Marv well, took the, yeah, over, was, and then and then. Well, we, I mean Marv only had four catches in the game. Yeah, but he took over drives. Like he finished yeah. multiple drives yeah, to start the game. I was discouraged with the Dorts last week is all I'm saying. Two, right. for, two for 11. If that's a range of outcomes, that bugged me. Yeah, I, I, it's really just a matchup play. It's the fact that it's Detroit and uh, they give up the most slot fantasy points and that's kind of his role. Are you saying goodbye to Christian Kirk? Yeah, I'm willing to, yeah. Yeah. Keon Coleman? No. No. Josh Palmer? Yes. yes. Michael Pittman? No. no. Cortland Sutton? Sure. I mean, yeah. he's fine. I you can you can. DeAndre yeah. Hopkins. He's just like all these players. If he was out there, we could say the same thing. Uh, no, Hopkins still coming back from injury. I'd, I'd hold him. Yeah, who, I would too. Who do you believe in more after their big week at tight end? Hunter Henry, Mike Gesicki, or Zach Ertz? Long term. Long term. Right. If if it's long term, it's not Ertz, or Henry, or Gesicki. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, long term is just not how you. I don't think you can view the tight end position on waivers that way. If I well, I mean, people that had Dalton Schultz, he's doing nothing. People that have had, you know, these spot start guys that are doing nothing. I mean, you got two weeks. Yeah, what I'm saying is like I'm I'm gonna just be trying to stream the position, find matchups. So I'll take Gasicki because he's got the Commanders this week. Um, they're at home, and he you know nine targets last week. So Gasicki uh, would be your top pickup. I I think I'd I'd probably ride with Hunter Henry for this particular week he get, and Jets yeah yeah but I mean who's Sauce gonna take away not Hunter Henry I wouldn't think I don't know maybe man, he was seventy five percent of their yards <laughs> maybe maybe that's what the the Jets end up doing Zach Ertz is his the floor is safe the ceiling is non existent and Mike Gesicki is like we just we have not seen repeatedly. Joe Burrow force feed the tight end position, uh, and Jamar Chase had. Man, I, Jamar Chase was under twenty percent of the targets last week. I expect a a market correction for Jamar, and even it, and if T is back, then it's even worse for for Gesicki. Fifteen percent, fifteen percent of the targets went to Jamar Chase. Gesicki was. At what are you doing? Gesicki was at twenty six percent. What are you doing? He's there, better man? than Jamar, obviously. <laughs> Um, okay, so those are the three big names for a streaming tight end candidate uh, that are probably worth mentioning. I wa I am intrigued at the fact that Johnny Smith has been used in the Miami offense the way that he has. They don't really have a wide receiver three. 
They tried to throw the football to Robbie Chosen and, and Du Bois. John, who had seven targets, I don't want to yeah. ignore that, and I don't want to ignore it when he provides an easy – Skyler. Yeah, he provides an easy path for Skyler to get the ball out of his hands early in the drive and swing it out to John, who's more of a wide receiver. I am just going to flag his name as an emergency. All right, that's start. fine. What about Cole Strange? <laughs> the offensive lineman for the Patriots, I think, is not going to be a big play, but Brenton Strange also probably shouldn't be picked up. Defensively, favorite pickups of the week, who do you have? Uh, the Raiders? Well, the I, Raiders, don't, I don't care that it's Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton will throw interceptions. Uh, yeah. I would say, I mean, the, the, the Browns are one of my favorite plays. They're not probably a pickup this week. They're super rostered. The Green Bay Packers have a pretty good defense. Uh, will Levis loves to just make boneheaded mistakes where the How other team can make touchdowns. Is his head coach and him right now? Oh my gosh, he like, hates him. Normally, it does seem like he hates Will Levis. I mean, normally you go to bat for your quarterback, and in week one you don't say it would have been better that we just punted on first down. And in week two, he just literally is like, well, he the, did it again. He's like, he did it again. The play's <laughs> dumb. It's stupid. He's a big boy. He knows what he did wrong. Like, I, I think I think that's what Will Levis needs. I. He needs to shame. Be, he needs to be shamed out of. He needs to be like it's the it's the it's the quintessential spanking. It's like it you are going like to remember that. your lesson it, because you didn't Publicly. remember it. Yeah, you didn't. You don't spank in front of everybody, do you? <laughs> no, no. But uh, that I mean, this is how you, you know you spank verbally at the podium. So Will Levis, um, yeah, that was frustrating. So Tennessee, I mean, Will Levis with the the mistakes. They play Green Bay. Green Bay could be picked up. Inversely, Tennessee could be picked up. They've yes. been playing well on defense, and Malik Willis is their current quarterback. It will be interesting to see that that version of the Green Bay Packers not versus the the Colts. And not at home, not at Lambeau. Yeah. They're going to be in Tennessee. I think the, may, the Titans' defense might be a better pickup than the than the Packers' defense. I, I want both, but I, I usually, when I'm in the tiebreaker, I'm going to go with the home crowd the Colts get to play at home against Chicago who has no offensive line right now and without Keenan Allen if he's not back out there you, you target Caleb Williams yeah he you know seven sacks I think last week pressured on 27 of 28 dropbacks the Colts can do that a little bit this week and keep targeting the Bears um you know Tampa Tampa's a tough one they played Denver so you say okay it's Bo Nix but Tampa has not put up a lot of fantasy points on defense through two weeks when I was looking at them. That one is – it's a it's a good start. It's fine. Like, if you want to mitigate against possible major problems against you, like, you can go that direction. I don't think Bo Nix is putting up big points. Bo Nix. How'd it feel? Felt good, man. All right. And then Minnesota, um, you know, Houston, they look great on defense. They take on Minnesota. Sam Darnold. I still think it's a target. Maybe, yeah, I, I, th maybe. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, Sam Darnold um, is playing very well, looks good. He's got an offensive system and Justin Jefferson, but it is Sam Darnold. And, you know, if if, if we look back a month from now and go, oh, yeah, it, well, it, it was, it, you know, it, it was not going to be a season long of greatness. You know, S Sam Darnold's had good stretches in the past. I think – he started uh, one of the years in Carolina. I think the first month of the season, he was like the quarterback. Oh yeah, one he or, like had all the rushing yeah. touchdowns. Yeah, it was like I I think we were a month into the season, and nonsense. he was the NFL leading leader in rushing touchdowns. Thanks again to NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at YouTube.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital-only games. Device and content restrictions apply. Let's talk quarterbacks. All right, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right, I'm going to go first here because I intentionally did not choose Jason's player. Okay because I didn't want to jinx him, and he's going to cost you this week. I, I The reaction, and uh, the spoiler alert, is Derek Carr. The, the, the reaction to Derek Carr, I'm already seeing it on Twitter. I'm seeing it in messages to us. They want to know if you dump full fab on Derek Carr. 
They want to know if you, if no. you, how much fab you spent on Derek Carr, and is this for real? The headline in the NFL through two weeks is the Saints' offense. They've scored 15 consecutive times when Derek Carr has been the quarterback. Clint Kubiak, they're already chiseling him in stone. Which, by the way, if you're Chicago's offense with Shane Waldron, you interviewed Clint Kubiak. Maybe you should have gone that direction. <laughs> no, they they liked what they saw. But I didn't want to jinx Carr because when you give Carr the limelight, when you shine a light on him in the starts of the week or the streamers, and you hit that drop, I'm just saying, it's scary. Well, hit it for me then. It sounds like I, I'm going first. We can do that. Send in the car. Send in the car. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I will absolutely send in the car. He's been on fire, and the matchup is perfect. The Eagles, right now through two games, their defense is tied for 32nd in yards per play, 29th in EPA per play, 27th in sack rate, 23rd in quarterback pressures. I told you they haven't had an edge sack in There's a branch games. over the trap. There's a branch <laughs> over the trap. Let's lay another palm frond over yeah, the trap. The, the I remember bit. I've been here before, I so I'm scared. I'm in. Tell now, me why it's okay. It, it's okay because of Clint Kubiak's system. You, you see the changes. Last year, they were last in play action. They're first in play action. It's a completely modernized NFL system, and they were playing – I mean, you could we even handle watching the Saints offense last year? It was the most putrid, boring, non-creative offense I've ever seen. It was – it was – everyone it, stands it was the still. Worst. You guys run straight, and I'm going to dump it off to Kamara, and it's completely revamped. And the Eagles – the Eagles are in trouble defensively. They, they, they haven't figured that out yet. It's the helmet thing. they got to put them on – uh, forward, forward. Look, I, everything you're saying about Derek Carr makes him an obvious pick this week. I do think he's not going to be an option for everybody because the cost on the waiver wire will be there. Yeah, I'm going to spend like 10 fab. Sure. Okay, that that's a good, good answer. I'm going to go with Gardner against Carolina, and I wanted to look for somebody that was completely undrafted that would be completely free on your waiver wire. Um, he has the highest completion percentage in the NFL. He has – Arguably the best. Gar Gardner Minshew? Yes. He has argued. Gardner Minshew? Yes. Yeah, because he's Devontae Adams and Brock wow. Bowers have been unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you can make the argument that Adams is he's a top five easily wide receiver, and then you've got Brock Bowers, who's a top five tight end receiver. So those two options and no running game, to me, and the fact that Dalton could keep the game more competitive – I think it's actually a really sneaky spot start if you're hurting a quarterback. I agree. Yeah, I, I don't disagree that the the completion stat was most completions shocking. the most completions in the NFL of any player. Look at you, Gardner. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Justin Fields. Justin Fields is actually playing pretty well, like just in football terms. Fantasy, it's kind of been the inverse of the normal Justin Fields situation. Of usually we get great fantasy football performances and poor NFL performances but it, like he's playing he's playing well he you know he's, That's the Jameis algorithm? He is, like when Jameis played worse it was better yes. for fantasy. <laughs> right and, and, and like the Gardner stat that's shocking. Justin Fields is completing 70% of his passes right now. That that is absolutely mind blowing. He's still running uh, a ton 14 attempts in week 1, 8 in week 2. Just haven't hit the big play yet, and if Justin Fields keeps playing the way that he's playing, it's it will happen. So, rushing yards, uh, a, a better matchup for for George Pickens here in in Week Three. Doesn't get Patrick Sertan. I think that, Pick, that Fields should be picked up a play. Dude, go trade for George Pickens. Uh, if you're out there, if you're listening, he is the, the best buy low to me. He had three point nine fantasy points this last week. Terrible, terrible week. He was awesome. He was awesome last week in that game. He had uh, he had two monstrous, awesome plays called back on penalties uh, against Sertan. I, I think he has looked great by low chance. He has great by looked low chance. outstanding on film. Are you dropping Caleb Williams if you drafted him? Yes. Oh yeah. I are you dropping him. Justin Herbert if you drafted him? Yeah, sure. And are you dropping Jared Goff, who went from the Dominator to uh, shout out to the Foot Clan, the Domester Fire. <laughs> oh, hey, yes. So, the Domester Fire. That is tremendous. Jared Goff, he gets to play in another dome this Good week. Good work, Foot Clan. In Arizona. I saw that this morning. I was like, <laughs> somebody wrote in and said, You yes. need to call him the Domester Fire now. And I said, 
I just wrote back instantly. I said, yeah, we're probably using that. The, <laughs> so, <laughs> Jared Goff, I yeah. would like, would you make the pivot from Jared Goff to, to Derek Carr? This week I would, I wouldn't dump Goff Probably. I'd probably try to bounce those two guys back and forth based on matchup and performance. Yeah, I, it's I just think, such a good matchup again against the Cardinals. I think Goff I mean, bounces back. I'm not dropping Goff. Um, I I I think I might start Carr over him this week. Yeah, but I'm not going to drop him. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Carr has in store. Can he overcome being called the stream of the week? That is the important. I, the amount of times that we've hit that button because everything's lined up for Derek Carr. I'm so looking forward to a new future here. And the fact that Jason's head will be shaved live on the air <laughs> if Carr continues to win. But I'm rooting for it. All right. That is it for today's episode. Tomorrow we have an Unsolved Mysteries episode of the Ooh. podcast. We've got Hungry for More. We've got the Thursday night preview. And, of course, the matchups, the starts of the week, and a whole lot more Thursday and Friday. So check out the community. Get access to the waiver wire custom rankings and tons more. I mean, the, the jointhefoot.com community – is incredible. You get access to a uh, the most active, robust Discord server where you can talk to like-minded fantasy players, bounce questions off of them, get answers, and you get access to an extra episode of this show. You get access to the Start Sit tool, the expanded version, the uh, the ultimate dashboard for optimization, and like 20 more things, including advanced metrics, the Stream Finder tool, and things that our team has been uh, diligently adding for years. So. If you want to learn more about that and become a part of the team supporting this team, go to jointhefoot.com. That is it. We're done. Until tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Good luck with your waivers. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.